Okay. Can you all well, see that it's recording? Yes. There we go. All right. Good morning, everyone. Uh, this is uh, our first Friday chat for the month of May. And I uh, just want to introduce everyone that we're going to having guests with the uh, East Valley Institute of Technology. This session is being recorded. And uh, my name is Tanya Coakley. I'm with the Salt River Higher Education Office. I'm the program accountant. And I'd like to have the rest of our higher education staff introduce themselves. Hi, everyone. My name is Rebecca Ronstadt Contreras. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, we appreciate you being here. And um, I'm going to mute myself now and turn it over to more of my colleagues. Good morning. My name is Danielle Prieto. I'm one of the four advisors here in higher education. I'm a community member from Salt River. Welcome. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I'm Erica Outcult, Program Advisor for Salt River Higher Education, and thank you for being here. Good morning, everyone. My name is Davina Leone. I'm the Career Guide Coordinator um, in the Higher Education Department. Thank you all for joining us. I'd like to invite um, Evit to uh, introduce their staff and their before they present their presentation. I think you're muted. Leave it. There you go. Okay, here we are. I am Nancy Salmon. I am the external affairs coordinator for adult education. I do a lot of the community relations and trying to build partnerships within adult education. And because we've had trouble with our computer and our uh, large screen and camera, I'm going to be turning the computer each direction when each of the team here is talking. So I'm going to let Jerron introduce you. <laughs> you want to introduce yourself? Hello, my name is Jerron Neal. I'm the Foster Youth Services Coordinator here at EVID. I'm not sure if you can see people. <laughs> Hi, this is Chris Manzo. I am the Enrollment Advisor for Adult Education. Thank you, Tan Tanya. That's the three of us that will be here making presentations today. Okay, great. And if, uh, if you're all ready to present, uh, we can just go ahead and move forward with that. Okay, we're all going to cross our fingers that our presentation will pop up and you'll be able to see it. Now we can't see you, but can you see the presentation? And uh, no. You gotta share. They gotta share the. Okay, you gotta share the screen. You. <laughs> we have the presentation up. We're just trying to see where you can see it. Let's see where share. We'll share screen. There we go. Desktop window. Uh, this one. Okay. And then let's see if they can see us. And then go ahead and run your. Now do I we can see it now. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That. That's your presentation. There you go. Okay. Well, great. Being that. Um, we, East Valley Institute of Technology, we are better, better known in the area as EVIT. And of, of course, many of individuals will recognize us as a vocational training school. And what we wanted to reach out to you is to make sure that your team and everyone there knows of um, changes and the benefits and the opportunities we have to present um, the education, the skilled industry, education, and various different trades to the people in your community and the people in which you serve. The, we, our mission is to change lives by loving our students and serving our communities with a, with a career and college preparatory training experience. It produces a qualified workforce meeting the market-driven needs of business and industry. We're really focused here on loving our students and making sure that they feel um, 
that we care about them and the education that they get and that their focus is strictly um, our goal. We, the team that was introduced below the photo is myself, I'm Nancy, and then we have Chris Monzo and Jaron Neal with us today. Just to give you a little bit of background about even by the numbers, so to speak, we'd have two central campuses. Our adult education is on the main campus, which is the photo that you're seeing there. That main campus is on Main Street in Mesa between Dobson and Alma School Roads. Then we have a power campus, which has um, high school classes at this time, and it is on power in Williamsfield, still here in South um, East Mesa. And so then we also have a branch campus, we call it, on Apache Junction High School campus, 52 satellite campuses. A satellite campus means that we as a district, and let me back up just a minute. We have, you have things like Scottsdale School, School District, Mesa Public Schools, Tempe Schools, and EVIT is its own um, school district. And so within that district, we serve the, excuse me, um, all of a sudden I lost, in the satellite campuses, which are the high school campuses, which in within our school district, they have programs on their career and technical education programs on their campuses. And we oversee many of, um, we link with them and help with what's happening on those campuses. We have 4,600 um, high school students that attend here. They come from public schools, charter schools, private schools, and many homeschool students attend as well. Within our adult student population, we're, we range around the 800 number. As you see, we have 40 plus career training programs that are um, for high school and blended with adults. And then we have a 12, excuse me, 12 adult only career programs that will go into more to help you understand how that will relate to the individuals in which you serve. Because we're a separate district, we have a nine member school board. Um, the high school stats that we have are pretty impressive. Two out of three go on to higher education. 98% of those that attend EBIT gradu um, graduate high school. 94% of those, and we're very proud of this and we work very hard to make sure that those that attend here um, are in jobs related to their training, are facing military, um, excuse me, not facing military, joining college, joining the military, and many of them also serve religious missions and then come back to us and we help with placement. Um, again, this is where we're located, our campus there on Main Street. And then I'm going to let um, Chris take a few minutes to talk a little bit about some of the things he's involved with here on our campus. Fantastic, thanks. So we do have 12 adult uh, career training programs, adult only. And uh, in this particular uh, program, the these are, almost all of them are eligible for federal financial aid, FAFSA. Uh, there's just two of them that aren't, but they're all eligible for veterans education benefits. Uh, also, I help students when they need some additional help with, for example, scholarships. I will help them to know where they are, how to, how to apply, how to do some of those things so that they can move forward. Because sometimes, as you all know, one of the things that uh, may get in the way is uh, cost. So we try to help them. I try to help them to overcome that by showing them um, the different options. Um, so we will uh, likely, uh, and I, as I talk to students, especially uh, the adult population, their biggest thing is usually, um, like I said, cost, uh, how long does it take uh, to complete the program, and jobs, can I get jobs? So we do have uh, now in place a um, career counselor that helps in a placement counselor whose name is Jake Hansen. He helps the students with uh, the next step, which is the employment opportunities. You want to move forward and yeah so we'll go and talk a little bit about the uh, programs themselves uh, so we do have uh oops let's go to the there we go so the programs that we do actually have are as follows the aesthetics collision repair cosmetology you can see here from aesthetics all the way to welding uh, the most popular of these uh, the top three i would say would be welding uh, aesthetics and cosmetology uh, but they're all you know very well attended and uh, we typically are running a lot of the enrollments right through the summer. The 
program, the nursing assistant, the CNA, that is the quickest uh, way to you know, move on to a career because it's only 14 weeks. So that one, uh, that is very popular because of that. And also it's a prerequisite to the practical nurse, the LPN program. So that if a student wants to continue the practical nurse, one of the prerequisites is to have a CNA certification and they can do both here. Ooh, yeah, you want to yeah. talk about that one? Yeah, so the other thing we do assist uh, students with, and that is our um, high school equivalency or GED uh, class. Uh, we just added a summer class that starts on May the 23rd. It's a nine week class. It is in person. Uh, it's, the student comes in, they do it online, but they do come into the class and there is an instructor in the class. So if the student has a question uh, or if they need a little additional tutoring, whatever the case may be, the doors are open for the GED class from 8 a.m. until three. And so the students are required to you know, make sure that they're in class for the week, uh, 10 hours. They can work with the instructor because some of them may be working, et cetera. And so they can come in and vary their hours just so long as they talk to the instructor about you know, when they're coming in, how long they're gonna be in so that he is aware of their attendance and make sure that he marks them you know, for the week. One other thing about high school equivalency is that most people recognize it as GED, but that is a brand name. And so we offer the courses and they do the same tests and things like that. We just don't call it GED here, but it is equivalent. It's the same. Right. Yeah, we're preparing them for the test or for the exams. There's five of the, the exams, but we prepare them for that. And students typically, um, they'll may go to for two sessions. Typically, the first session, they'll, they'll take on the more difficult, uh, challenging uh, classes for them, like math or English, whatever the case. And then they'll come back and, and tackle the, the ones that are a little bit easier for them. But again, they can create their own plan if they want to do the reverse. They can do that, too. We do recognize that many um, that are trying to get into the workforce and various other positions, um, this is one of the prerequisites that um, many um, employers look for. Whether or not you go on to a skilled profession or not, the high school equivalency is something that all professors are, are excuse me, professions and businesses are looking for. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about this particular screen. These are the 12 adult um, ed programs that we have. And in this will help you see that the tuitions vary, the out-of-pocket expenses vary, and which Chris talked about the tuition can be covered through scholarships for financial aid, through veterans benefits. The out-of-pocket expenses would be something um, to that would they'd have to personally come up with, but we also have scholarships that help with that as well. You can see the program lengths are all very different. You can become an EMT, you can become a CNA, and some of those are um, short amount of time. And so here, even though our school campus, when it says 10 months, we do run a school campus from April to, excuse me, August, August. to May. Um, I've had a crazy morning, so I'm sorry. <laughs> but, and then you can see that the schedule on the far right, many of the courses allow sometime in the morning, sometime in the afternoon, or some are evening. Um, letting you know that if they're on campus and they choose to be on campus between, before 4 p.m., they would have to pass a fingerprint clearance because they're on campus with high school students. You can see the hours needed. That's the hours needed for certification. That's a lot how the tuition is determined and the length of the program is determined. Also, start dates vary within our adult classes. So not everybody has to start right in August. There are other times depending on the course that you're most interested in. Are there any questions on this right here? Of course, we're breezing through this and maybe you'll save the questions to the end, but this is a whole lot of information. And I know that Rebecca has it to send it out to you. Um, if you want to see this um, in a you know, close up, study it and present it to the individuals in which you serve. I think we do have one question. And that was, when do these prices or, or when does do these tuition amounts go into effect? Is it for the upcoming? Uh, so it's, would this go into effect July 1? Yes. Uh, whatever the, yeah, the first class starts in July and it is July through the end of ne the term, which would be in May of next year or whenever that class ended in, in 2023. 
Thank you. July, July to August one. So okay. the 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 cost is mirrors the fast for the federal. So it's July first all the way to the end of June of the following year, and then the next July starts a new period, which may or may not change here as far as costs. Did that help? Did that make sense if it's aligned with FAFSA? Yes. Okay. All right. We'll just we'll move on, and then we're always going to be here for questions when they arise. I'm going to turn the time to Jaron, who's going to talk to you a little bit our, about our foster youth program. Hello. So we have uh, a couple of different ways that we serve students. Um, as Nancy and Chris discussed earlier, we have the high school program, then we have the adult only program, and then we have the blended classes. So um, in terms of uh, students in foster care who are in high school, um, they're eligible to attend even tuition free uh, if they are uh, in ascending district. Um, so there's been some changes to what you're seeing on the actual PowerPoint presentation. What ascending district is, is if any of your students in foster care are going to pretty much any of the East Valley high schools, um, then they are able to come to EVIT uh, tuition free. Um, if they are living in uh, Mesa or Chandler or uh, one of the ascending district areas, and they're going to a school outside of the East Valley, then they still can come to EVID tuition free. Uh, so to give an example, if you have a student that lives in Mesa, but say they're going to high school at, at Betty Fairfax in Phoenix, that student could still attend EVID free because they are a Mesa resident. If that student is living in Phoenix and going to Betty Fairfax, then there would be a tuition attached to them attending EVID. Now, the caveat in all of that is the East Valley School. So say that student is attending Mesa High School or Red Mountain. Red Mountain will transport the student to and from EVID using their buses uh, because they have an IGA with EVID. If that student is living in Mesa and they go to Betty Fairfax, Betty Fairfax will not transport them. It will then be up to uh, the student's placement. And again, I'm referring to you know foster care students. Um, now, if a student is living in ascending district and they are doing a uh, online credit recovery high school, grad solutions or ingenuity, anything like that, they still are eligible to attend EVID tuition free because they are considered a Mesa resident. Any questions about that before I move on to the graduates? Okay. Um, now, high school graduates, uh, students in foster care, if they've already graduated high school, they receive a ton of financial aid money. So they will get their Pell Grant money, which can be applied uh, to the tuition. Um, they also have the ETV funds, which can be applied to the tuition. And then there's also the pension fund uh, money, which can be applied to the tuition. And then there may also be, and I'm just saying because I don't know, um, if there are any scholarship opportunities through Salt River, which could also be applied to the tuition. Um, but between the Pell Grant and the ETV money, the tuition is covered. Uh, we have yet to have a student in foster care not have the tuition covered between those two pockets of money. Now, if the student is a high school graduate who is attending a blended course, um, a blended course is a uh, high school course that'll have adult students in it. So some of the classes uh, will qualify for federal financial aid because they're an adult only course and they have a federal school code to put on their FAFSA. But say if a student is already graduated high school and he or she wants to do culinary, culinary is considered a high school course that students can attend. So in that situation, the Pell Grant would not pay for that course. Their ETV funds, or they could use their pension funds, would come in and pay the tuition of that course. And again, this is strictly referring to our, our high school students. Uh, the first half was those that are still in high school. The monies I'm referring to now are the ones who've already graduated high school. Uh, one last caveat is that we know that Students in foster care are very transient population. 
Uh, so sometimes EVIT's admissions policies, a student may not qualify with the GPA or um, the attendance or referrals of those things. The best thing to do in that situation is to contact me and whoever refers the student will then staff with me what are the circumstances that led to maybe the attendance issues or the low GPA. And then I can meet with our director of admissions for a special admission when necessary. Uh, the one thing that we do not have a special admission for is that students need to be a high school junior at least uh, to be able to come to EVIT as a high school student. So if your student has less than seven credits in high school, then they won't be eligible to attend EVIT regardless of their foster care status. Any questions about the high school stuff before I move forward? Oh, it's an easy group. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so next is the GED with students in foster care. Uh, our program for students in foster care who would like to get their GED is called the Foster Youth Career Program. Similar to our regular HSE program, there is a $100 cost uh, to enroll in the program. $50 re-enrollment fee, that is completely waived for students in foster care. They would just need to re-sign their enrollment contract. The GED courses are online through GED Academy. Although it is an online source, we still require that the students attend a minimum of 12 hours per week in person in our GED lab. They can break those 12 hours up however they see fit. If they want to do three days, four hours, if they want to do two days, six hours, we don't uh, set a set schedule for that. It's just that we want them to be in person uh, just because historically when we leave it up to students to do it all online, we're not seeing a lot of successes in getting their GED. Um, we do have a GED instructor in the class. Um, and one of the benefits of this program is when a student passes a section of the GED, we will reimburse them the cost of that test. So it's as simple as a student in this program, they go and take the GED test for math. They then come to me and say, hey, Jay, look, I passed math. They can show it to me on their phone. We'll then cut a check for that student to reimburse the cost of that GED section. Um, that also includes their civics test, um, which they'll need to get their HSC diploma. Now, the big uh, bonus to this program is students who uh, complete this program, get their GED. They can choose any of our CTE programs on the main campus and we will scholarship them the tuition cost for that. Um, so student gets their GED uh, and they decide they want to go into construction, welding, cosmetology, whatever program they choose, we're going to scholarship that, that tuition for them. Um, and the reason we do that is we would like our foster students to not just get their GED, and then work a quote unquote dead end job. Uh, we'd like them to get their GED and then go into a career field of their choosing. Uh, in terms of credit recovery, we currently do not offer credit recovery at EVIT, um, but we do work with Career Success High School and the Dropout Recovery Program where the students get the packets. Uh, work very closely with South Point High School and their credit recovery program. MGRM Pinnacle and Primavera Online. Um, we are in the process of speaking with some credit recovery options about finding ways to create a hub here on campus to make it a one-stop shop, but uh, those haven't been finalized just yet. We're gonna let Chris take just a moment. If you had any students that were interested in joining the program, He's just going to take a quick moment to show you what it looks like online, how they would apply, and how you can assist them. And we can assist you. Yeah. Excellent. So the process is it's pretty, pretty easy. We go to, to eva.com. That's the very first place to start. Okay. And once you get there, you'll see at the very top of the page, there's that enroll now section. Now, in this case, because we are talking about adults, uh, we will go into the adult education link and I'll show it to you in a second, even though the person may be, uh, for example, wanting the HSC class, the GED class. So let's click on enroll now. And then you'll see here's the, the two sections, the two choices of high school or adult. 
Um, everyone, again, going into any of these classes will go to the adult uh, enrollment process. And then once you get to the next section, you'll see, hey, here's your application as an adult. And then this part here is very similar. A lot of the students that I talked to are very familiar with how to create an account. They've created emails, they've created other accounts. So they're very familiar with this. Uh, just click on it and then it's gonna take you right to the process of tell us who you are, where do you live, um, your education, et cetera, and that type of background. And as you go, you'll get to a, to a section that is going to ask you to upload some documents. Uh, and that's the place where it can be challenging because you can only upload certain types of formats, like for example, PDF is the best, uh, but you, can, you can't, there are other formats, um, JPEGs are not. So sometimes students take pictures of their IDs or something like that, and then it won't go. So in that case, they can just call me or call Cecilia and we'll help them to you know, do a little workaround. And that, any questions on, on the how to upload or how to apply? Yeah, it's a pretty simple process, but as I said, if there's any challenges, anything comes up, uh, instead of frustration, just give us a call. I'll be glad to walk anyone through any part of the process at any time, because I know it can get challenging, especially when you're trying to upload those documents. All right, so as far as the financial aid, as I mentioned, all of the program, all of the adult programs, are eligible for uh, VA funding. So if a student is a veteran, I can help them through that process. Uh, there are a few steps, but I can help them through that process. Now the financial aid for uh, FAFSA, for the you know, free application of, for federal student aid, only, only 10 of them are eligible for that. The EMT class and the nursing assistant class are not eligible. They're too short. And so they're not eligible for uh, the funding for the, for the federal grants. We actually only use the grant part also because uh, we don't, you know, we don't want students to leave here with debt. And so when the student applies, our finance team will then, you know, go ahead and start looking through that. Once they have the grant in place, then they reach out to the student, let them know, hey, here's, here's your grant, here's what you're eligible for, if they are, and how we're going to apply it to your fund, your, your tuition. And also, as I mentioned earlier, we do have scholarships that are available from agencies. Um, there are a few there on the website. And again, I can show any student anytime if they just call me, if they, they want to take a look at those, I'd be happy to go through those, show it to them and you know, take them to the websites. I can't apply for them, but I can show them where everything is and, and you know, what, what they're looking for in terms of uh, the criteria that the agency may be looking for. Okay, and I also work with um, different agencies, uh, most notably with Arizona at Work. Uh, I, I do assist uh, students with that to make sure that uh, they get the proposal letter that the Arizona Network needs so that then they can, um, on their end, send us the invoice and we can move forward. I can do that very quickly. Typically, once I get that information from the case manager, I will send them the proposal. And by the next day, typically, we're, we're ready to go. I can let the, the student know that uh, you know, they'll be registered. Any questions? What you're seeing right now is Chris's information because he is one of the enrollment advisors. But of course, if you had any other concerns about or questions about the foster youth foster program, then Jerron is the key. I am happy to make any connections. We are grateful for your time today and allowing us to present. I think there are a couple of really wonderful things about EVIT. One of them is its flexibility and the opportunity for our students to go right into an industry trade and making a great salary. Um, not having to sit through the college courses that some of them aren't interested in. If so if they have a passion in one of our trades, we'd love to discuss and share with them. Also, we have lots of opportunities. I think one of the beauties I see here is we have adults who may not have focused greatly in high school. They may not have the best grades possible. And so there are certain universities or certain courses that they wanted to attend that they weren't able to. We try very hard to get every student in here as best we can. And as an adult, they come out with the same certifications, the same licensing that anyone that would have gone to one of those um, programs like a, um, LPN, the licensed practical nurse. You come here as a practical nurse, you do all the same work, you go out with the same licensing that they do in any of those other programs. 
And so we're pretty excited about that because if you're willing to work hard, we're willing to help you get placed in a, in a job and in a career that you would have great passion for. So we hope that the individuals in which you serve, you will reach out to us and let us assist you in trying to help them be more successful in their own life and providing for themselves and their family. So thank you. And if there are any questions, don't hesitate to let us know. Now, how do I get back to them? <laughs> <laughs> That's the tricky part. Is it? And then we'll stop sharing. The... We hit. I have to put my glasses on to see what we're doing. So we'll stop sharing. And we'll get us back to that. Is that? Oops. Oops. Now I just really worse. I I can't hit. It's not. I'm sorry, Tanya. Can you still hear us? Okay. Uh, I can hear you. <laughs> we're, okay, we're trying to get there. You or we're getting back to you a little bit there. Okay. So not sure if you had a chance. There's Jeron. <laughs> He's waving hi and myself. And there's Chris. So we're all here to help in any way that we can. Any questions that have come up? Okay, does anyone have any questions to share with or to ask uh, the EBIT team? I mean, I, Tanya, you and I have been going back and forth. And so if we've been able to answer your questions, there are any others? The one question I do have is um, the deadline dates for applications for students say, like, for instance, they want to go to the welding program. It starts in August. When do they have to complete an application to have that start date in August? Excellent question. So the absolute uh, last date is July 15th. However, um, because of the popularity of you know all of the programs, I recommend that students start right away. They can start registering now. Even if they're missing a document or two, we can continue the process and then get those documents later as we need them so that we can at least save a seat for the student. Okay, thank you. I think one of the other conversations at some point, and um, I've been working closely with James on one of the um, construction, James Smith there, then construction program. So I hope all of your students or all of the individuals you serve, the adults there, are understanding that that program is coming up and we're working trying to get that started. Anything else? Uh, another question. Some of the healthcare uh, certificates, um, is there, are students notified before they enter those programs that they have to say, pass not just a fingerprint because they're on campus with other high school students, but that if they, I don't know, have a record that they may not be employable? Another excellent question. So part of the application process, uh, everyone, every student fills out a fel felony form to that. Now, what I understand as far as employment and medical, if the person can obtain the level one fingerprint clearance card, then as far as we're concerned, hey, we can you can come to class, you can do that. However, moving forward with the employment, that's going to depend on the employer. So again, uh, but as far as we're concerned, if you can if if you can obtain that, you can be here. Uh, the other thing that I would say regarding the enrollment process, and that is that there are certain documents that we do need to have in order to move forward. For example, like an ID. So we that's part of the initial process, but we also need. All, for example, an immunization, or we need a, a social security card. Those types of things we can get later. So when I said, you know, we can get certain things later, yes, but the ID, we need that up front so that we can move forward. Otherwise, it will not let you submit the application. And by the way, the fingerprint card, so all of, especially uh, practical nursing, uh, but pretty much all of the medical programs uh, will, will require the student to have a fingerprint clearance card because they're going to go on clinicals. And when they go to the clinical site, they're going to need those there. So we just let students know up front, hey, even though you're not 22, you're in a medical program, you're going to have clinicals, go ahead and get this. I have instructions for students on how to get that card, and uh, I send it to all the students, especially the medical students.
One quick question. I think this might be foster youth, but what are what are ETV funds? So ETV funds uh, stands for Education Training Voucher, um, and it's actually an application through the Foster Care to Success website. Um, and what it is is ETV funds have give foster youth up to I believe it's sixty two hundred dollars a year uh, to pay for their education. Um, so it's kind of a step process where uh, the student fills out their FAFSA first, um, and then there's the question on the FAFSA, were you in foster care after the age of 13? Uh, once they click yes on that, then that'll automatically consider them an independent student and make them eligible for the full Pell Grant. Um, the reason why that has to be done first is because then they would do the ETV application, and um, after they complete that, they'll be contacted by an ETV advisor. And the first question they're going to ask is, have you done your FAFSA? So you have to do that first. And then depending on how much the tuition cost of the program is, will determine how your ETV funds are applied. So if a student is going to ASU uh, or say they're doing a program here with a large tuition, the Pell Grant will be applied first. And whatever the difference is, ETV will pay that difference for what they owe. Now, a student who's going to a community college, the Pell Grant will cover all their tuition. ETV will then have the student fill out a monthly budget on how much they're spending, and they will send those students a monthly stipend to live off of. So it could be something like they're getting a check for $600 a month to kind of just help cover their expenses uh, while they're in school. Um, even though it is a monthly stipend, they still have to maintain a uh, grade similar to financial aid, they can get put on academic probation. They have to still maintain their attendance. You can't basically get your ETV check, go buy a car and drop out of school. Now, they still make sure you're going to class, so. And then the last one I said was the pension fund. That's actually through Arizona Friends of Foster Care. Um, and that's up to $1,000 that can be used towards tuition for a vocational school. And so these funds are not like, well, except for maybe the um, pension fund might be just most applied only toward tuition and fees, but the EVT can be applied depending on the balance on their tuition, or if it's covered, say if safe higher ed comes in, covers their tuition, they get Pell. Pell might most likely get dispersed to a student and they qualify for EVT funds. And then they can turn in um, an application of their budget and all that and receive a monthly stipend. Correct. So a lot of it's okay. going to depend on what their cost is for school. So mm -hmm. um, for another example is like I'll have a student that's going to Chandler Gilbert and Chandler Gilbert has a partnership with ASU where students at Chandler Gilbert can live in the dorms at the Polytech campus. So even though it's a partnership with Chandler Gilbert, those dorms are ASU housing and a part of ASU housing is not only the dorm cost, but you have to have the meal plan. So in that scenario, the Pell Grant will cover all of their tuition for Chandler Gilbert. ETV will come in and then pay for the dorms and the meal plan. Now, because they're paying for that, that student's probably not going to get a monthly stipend from ETV because they just paid for all your housing expenses. Um, but if they're going to Chandler Gilbert and they're living in an apartment or they're living in a group home or something else, then they could get the monthly stipend and it's based completely off the need. So every process I'm describing, typically I will do with the student. Um, so I'll help your students do their FAFSA. I help them do the ETV application, the pension fund. Um, and part of the reason I do is because when we do do that budget, I have them put everything on there. So phone bills, toiletries, uh, catching the bus, every expense we can think of because we want them to get the most bang for their buck basically with that ETV funds. Any other questions? We, we really want to be able to serve your community in every way that you need us. We think we have a lot to offer and opportunities for growth in many ways. And again, hopefully, you know, James is reaching out and being able to work with that construction program. We're really excited to help you with that as well. I know we've taken up, I think, a little more than the time you gave us. Do you have anything else to add, Chris or Jerron? 
Any no, questions? no, just thank you for your time. We appreciate it. And anything else, John? No, Last just minute? thank you again. And, and if you do have any students in foster care, um, contact me because uh, I can make the process a lot easier, you know, when they're going through the applications and everything. So, and all of my contact information is on the website. So. I'm here to help make the um, the connections, but yet um, Chris and Jerron are really the ones that have most of the answers on how the process happens. And I'm, I'm more than happy to connect you all. We've lost Great. Tanya, we're all ready to say goodbye. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 Thank I, you. I, I think so perhaps. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here. And thank you for uh, presenting to our group. But like we said earlier, this uh, session is going to be or was recorded. So we'll go ahead and um, publish that later today. All right. Thank you so thank much. About that, everyone. Right. Thank you. Difficulties, but thank you. I appreciate the presentation. <laughs> all right. Bye -bye. All right. Thank you. Bye -bye. Good information. Thank you. Bye.